let's quickly explore this uh, what you can see flexibility in the railing tool so what i'm going to do i'm actually going to take some benefit of this object tool i know i have not explained this tool in my earlier uh, basic lessons but uh, still you can try this so here is supposed to be the main folder of archicad library 26 so that's my current release and if you just scroll down further you can check out there is a special construction and there is a basic shape folder in this conceptual uh, tree model is uh, something which i'm looking for so if you see it's uh, top view or it's uh, side view or it's 3d view it's a pretty decent uh, object for uh, if you want to just putting some conceptual uh, see information or the presentation in front of your client I'm just going to place this object uh, on the normal level and uh, without changing anything that is it's a 4 meter by 4 meter as its uh, diameter 9 meter its height so that's absolutely fine for me and I'm just going to place it somewhere on the empty part of my drawing uh, you can have a look at that object also so this is how it actually looks so uh, you can check out how this uh, particular 3d tree as a conceptual object so anyway let's see i can how can i use this and improve my presentation uh, so what i'm going to do i'm just going to go back to my floor plan uh, there i'll be selecting this object okay so once you have selected this object remember you can just directly jump inside this pull down menu file from there you have to go inside the libraries and objects and from there you can see save selection as and then if you check out there is a group where it shows as a stair riser, stair trade etc. There is supposed to be a railing post option. So I am going to take the benefit of this. Once I click on this, I will be uh, prompted for saving this object either inside a browse and you can save it outside or otherwise embedded library. Definitely I will continue with the embedded library. And I uh, will just give this name for this as a tree. Uh, conceptual uh, one okay uh, so once I save this obviously uh, some information will be uh, confirmed from your end so I'll just see okay for this also uh, now as I've seen that it is we are just bothering about the presentation so rest of things I'm not able to explain uh, so let's go and try to see how I can use this now element because now this element is captured as a post also. So I'm just going to go inside my railing tool and here once I travel inside my railing tool you can just check out in the main dialog of the railing uh, on the right side this geometry and positioning page is there. So I'm not changing anything right now or here but I'll do bother about my other parameters uh, like in the segments. I'm just going to uh, click on uh, portions like this balusters I'm not going to use and the uh, and drill I'm not going to use I'm going to even just continue with this uh, top rail also so uh, so altogether uh, nothing is left uh, besides the uh, bottom rail okay so this we will rework on this uh, and I'll show you how I can use this also for some other reason. By chance, if you don't have this, you can add it later also. Now let's talk about the inner post. So if I click on the inner post and here, what is the interesting part? Now in the second rollout of for the inner, po uh, inner post settings, you can check out it's written as a railing post 26. So here I'll just go and click and you will be surprised that your tree is also considered now as one of the member. So remember this is a kind of a uh, really a beautiful thing that you can actually literally use any object that you want to repeat uh, uh, on a specified path. So it can be a tree or a lamppost or maybe any other thing which you feel like it can be get used uh, and my target can be get solved by using this uh, particular rail tool. Okay, so I'm just going to continue. There's no preview for this at present. So don't worry. I'll just try to give you a few brief things. So you'll understand later. Um, explanation on that also we'll talk about like how we can pursue about this top view and all those things. So there's no top view at present. Uh, even there's a front view and there's a 3D view. 
um, no rendered image at present you have but it's okay like now what is our next target uh, see now this is the uh, that means now inner post will get represented by the uh, this particular tree which conceptual tree which we have uh, actually designed as a post member now the distance from the previous uh, see maybe i'll be putting this almost uh, 6 meter because 4 meter was my diameter so at least that kind of a gap should be there between uh, there shouldn't be any top side offset and all those things for a while i'm not interested to work for this also so uh, let's go and try to uh, work for this uh, one can use this as a baluster also or post also so that you check out what is your comfort I'll uh, let you know how to fine tune that also. Now, other things as such, I can't change over here anything. Uh, but now remember, apart from this, the nodes especially now you have to talk about in the node group, uh, group the post which is supposed to be on the turning points, you should see that it, uh, either you should use the same tree if you, in case you are interested to have the tree on the corner also where you're changing your path. Or otherwise you will see that no I don't want to have such things and then you can go for the none option so that's your choice okay so now the connections and the ends it doesn't make any sense so uh, there's no worry of you don't have to worry about this that you can even fine-tune if in case you're using something relevant to this you can fine-tune this also so uh, let's try to place this uh, uh, and see what kind of a possibly uh, what kind of output you can get now by default it is associative for the uh, railing and node uh, associativity is associative and segment associative is also associative so anyway see if i touch over here you can see my slab is getting sensed and if i hit the tab key my mesh is getting sensed so that's again your choice and uh, first of all we'll place and then we'll start fine tuning Say for example, I have picked one point over here and I am coming up to this point. Uh, moment I get uh, again this my hammer cursor, I am picking on that. I am now turning over here. Uh, one can definitely try to fine tune that if in case it is needed. Uh, and then this is the last point which I want to go for and again I will pick at the same point. So what will happen now? The railing was added. Right? But you are not able to see those icons which you are expecting for the tree presentation, the basic, the way this one was there. So we will go for that also, so don't worry about it. So now I am just going to the, my 3D view and uh, here you will be surprised to see that okay this is how it is actually appearing. So now we are going to talk about the fine tuning part of this, say for example if I want to place them a little bit inside and still I want to have some kind of a a sort of a fencing or a fencing wall and along with that I want to have some kind of a, a footpath also so that also I'll let you know so uh, to add some more elements uh, just try to single click and select this particular uh, fence now or the railing and then uh, moment you select this railing you can just check out there is a reference line option in the info box and uh, by default it shows the from the offset from the reference line as a 50 uh, i'll just try to make this say 2500 uh, and you will see that the trees are getting moved but uh, obviously they are not coming on the required side so here the reference line position i'll just try to change this to the first combination okay and then you will realize how it is giving me the required output okay now let's try to improve further as i mentioned that i'm going to add some kind of a uh, what you can call maybe um, this footpath or uh, the compound wall so what i'm going to do is it's just nothing but a very simple task here i'm just going to work for the rail uh, there's a one rail which is uh, which I have added over here and uh, if you just uh, select that rail and then just check out in the rail comp uh, component settings here I can just take some kind of a simple rectangle field one as a shape and then I'm just going to change this 
uh, maybe I'll start working for this as a footpath material. Uh, maybe just a simple concrete I can go and demand for. So concrete, a concrete uh, structure and the height for this say maybe uh, 150 and the depth for this I'll take this say around about uh, 1500. Now remember uh, this entire uh, appearance of this particular uh, element we are just going to check out how it will be there in on screen and uh, its placement you can check out it is supposed to be uh, a rail height which is supposed to be uh, again remember uh, its position altogether so let's see okay first of all and uh, see what is happening now uh, the problem obviously like you can see it is actually getting placed just underneath of this particular trees instead of that if i try to fine tune this you can check out horizontal offset and it is supposed to be the rail height also okay so the rail height i can keep it from this bottom at zero that is exactly uh, uh, touching okay remember uh, if you keep it zero by default then uh, this will be halfway down and up and if in case you try to say that no i just want to lift it slightly half of this uh, that is 150 should be above the uh, ground level then 75 because from that the offset will be considered so even if i say okay for this you will understand what is exactly happening and then apart from this again if i give the offset for this uh, half of this uh, 1500 that is 750 and uh, let's say okay and check out what happens so again 750 is moving that on the other side instead of that maybe then i'll try to work this with uh, minus uh, 800 okay let's see how it goes so here it is supposed to be so i have a still choice to further go ahead so might we i'll try to push this say around about uh, one meter okay minus and then this is how it is giving me the end product still there is a lot of space available let's fine tune this and uh, maybe i'll try to work hopefully this gives us a better reply yeah it is almost okay now uh, remember if you just try to check out the turning point also it's working absolutely fine uh, of course, uh, be careful in case if your uh, this reference line is not exactly turning as per your choice, you please edit and make it suitable. But uh, otherwise, it's going to give you the exact uh, end product. Now, on top of this, uh, another part which I've said that maybe just a small fence wall you want to add. You can have that also add to be get added. You just have to make sure that there's one more rail and probably I'll just say add and that i'm just going to click first of all once it get added let's try to edit this say for example it will be the material as a um, brick maybe it's just a kind of a, okay brick structure is also okay for us and then uh, width of this a uh, height for this you can may you may see that okay this will be almost a meter height and uh, thickness so uh, maybe you can say it will be 230 uh fine so once it is added now the problem is obviously its placement so i'll try to see that uh, its placement will be see um, okay let's place this with a gap of minus uh, 200 and uh, from the story uh, the half this 500 okay so exactly you can see how it is working and uh, you will just see okay for this and you will see that okay the uh, fence is also almost available over there now uh yeah we can fine tune this further so maybe i'll try to see this should be around about uh, minus 500 okay you can see now it is pretty much decent of course you want to fill up this gap either you change the size of the footpath or you can just try to push this back so you can even try to get the desired effect but uh, the main aim was just to give you the uh, clue or a kind of a, what you can see how quickly we can do the presentation now the another part of this 
uh, which I'm going to see. So you just go back to the floor plan and here you can now see that there is supposed to be possibility you can actually experience this object but the trees are missing over here. You can't see the trees location out over here. So a small script you have to add inside the uh, GDL uh, object which you have recently developed. Okay, so we have already created that um, uh, element which you know very well that if you go inside this and if you check the recently added element was tree, uh, the concept, conceptual uh, one. So I just have to a little bit modify this in its uh, settings especially uh, as an element. So I'll show you now uh, how we can do that and how we can get the schematic presentation for the trees. And if you want to add one more element along with the tree, how we can do that also. To get that uh, symbolic presentation for those trees, you just have to go inside the uh, libraries and object and you can see the open object. And from there, you can simply select the tree which recently we have added as an element. Well, once you see OP, open, obviously you will get one uh, new particular uh, tab where you can see uh, this is kind of a preview and the required description uh, which is automatically written from Archicad in when we have converted this into a uh, see a required uh, library part. Okay, so now what I have to do is uh, actually if, it, if you check you can get the 3D view and the elevation but you are not able to get any uh, top view. So uh, a very simple uh, thing which you have to do, go for, remember it's uh, not essential that you have to be a good programmer for this. You just follow these simple instructions uh, where you are able to solve the current problem, that's it. So there is one code which normally you have to uh, work for. And that's nothing but if you just uh, check out in the GDL scripting, there is one concept known as a uh, project 2, that is a 2D projection and the projection code, angle and method. These are the fields which you have to type and in that uh, normally what the project, uh, this projection code is supposed to be project 2 and the, uh, sorry, uh, the project 2 is supposed to be in your basic command you can say, uh, the projection code is nothing but uh, you just have to deal with a uh, very simple uh, option that whether it's supposed to be in a uh, top view or a side view etc uh, the angle uh, that is nothing but you just have to mention whether it will be a, um, which side from which side you want to take the uh, projection and the method the method can be is nothing but whether you just want to have a ordinary uh, checkout over here they have written whether it should be in a wireframe structure or a hidden line. So we will prefer these uh, hidden lines. So altogether, the project 2 is supposed to be your uh, sort of a command you can say. And then uh, the top view, uh, this uh, 270, uh, sorry, uh, the projection code will be uh, top view. Uh, angle will be 270, which you just remember it has to be. And then afterwards, you just have to type the uh, required method uh, in which uh, uh, the required view should get generated. So that will be 2. So what I am going to do is, I am just going to type over here project 2 then space then there will be uh, the required projection uh, method okay uh, or from where you want to see the object then the angle from where you want to view this and the type of the view which you will get generated so that will be 2. Just click uh, for the check script and you will get the uh, prompt like uh, the script is ok and uh, you move back to this and you will see that particular element was getting reflected the way you want. Of course it is not coming exactly as a circle because the targeted element is not exactly in circle. If you want to add the circle and uh, then either uh, instead of this you should type a simple method of uh, creating the circle that means uh, you should uh, enter the circle to uh, again as uh, your uh, so this is my maybe the command circle to uh, its location for uh, origin that is center of the circle 
and then by mid default maybe it's a uh, radius so 0.25 and if i just switch back you will see there's a one more circle added which is very tiny compared to the outside one because this is nothing but like a tree trunk you can see it is working so i can just simply copy this control c i'll enter control v paste and i might even change this maybe you just uh, go and make this somewhere as uh, maybe one let's see and uh, back to this and again over here you can see now almost it is showing somewhere relevant option uh, of course if you just want to match with this exact the outer one then probably uh, you can try to change this maybe i'll try to say this can be equivalent to uh, 4 and back to this okay now it is becoming too big so 2 will be okay okay almost fine now and then if you want you can discard this that's your choice do you want to keep this or that means the circle will be exactly in a, the way you want but uh, the projection which you have generated maybe not that appropriate just because the original object is not exactly in a circular it's a schematic tree so it is working in octagon or something like that or hexagon like that okay so uh, let's try to put save over here and we will just go back uh, to our uh, floor plan you can see all those particular required tree locations are also now getting highlighted now if in case you say that yes i want to further fine tune this maybe i just want to add some lamp post also so okay let's try for that just go inside the lamp tool and uh, here we are not talking about rendering of uh, or using this lamp later for the rendering purpose i'm just going to take this object uh, from the library uh, see now this is the supposed to be in a street lamp and this particular object how it looks uh, of course, if you are not able to view this properly, just go inside the next page over here and simply try to uh, use this particular contour of pen, maybe a point, uh, one number pen, which is a black color in the current uh, pen set. And uh, fine, it's placement, I'll just say zero from the current story. Uh, and I'll just try to say okay for this. And again, I'll just place it somewhere over here. Now remember, once it is getting placed, we have to again select this of course you want to see that how it appears in 3d you can simply go and check out how it appears over here uh, all its relevant uh, height and everything you can please check as per your choice for example if you check its earlier page and its height so the lamp uh, dam, uh, this but geometry the height i can make it exactly three meter if i want uh, the overall uh, post diameter and all those things so please just try to make it suitable for your current need and then after this i'm just uh, going back to my uh, this uh, floor plan i will select this object over here and i'll simply just try to see that okay save selection as in the same process it is just nothing but i'll again say this is the railing post and uh, this time i'll say this will be enough lamp post okay and i'll just save this now remember again the same process is uh, followed and the object was generated now what is the problem uh, that again if you place this you can see the object in 3d okay so let's try to first of all place this uh, as a new post over here so i'll just select this go inside the setting so my railing was selected i'm going back to the setting in the inner post option make sure now already you have added the post which is uh, representing the conceptual tree i'll go for add for one more and now but just randomly i'll click over here now once i clicked obviously this new post is added that means the same tree was added but i'm not interested to keep this as a tree now so i'm just going to click over here and i'll see that my newly added lamp post is available okay so if you go for its preview in 3d and the front elevation you can see this but no top collision are available you know how to generate that so we will be doing that also 
and now it's placement so i'll just say that it will be exactly placed from the earlier one at the 3 meter distance okay so this will get fine tuned all the offsets and everything is as as usual i just have to say okay over here and you will see there is a slight change and because the first object placed and all those things are uh, added accordingly so uh, i'll just go inside my 3d and you will see that okay the kind of uh, placement of this uh, lamps also available now only problem is that they will appear uh, next to each other that is for sure in the sense so one post a lamp post and then the tree okay so anyway uh, this looks pretty good now fine right? and now the next part is uh, if in case you want to see its reflection in 2d and if you want to turn them say for example right now the orientation of this uh, lamp uh, if you just want to exactly rotate this by 90 degree and make it parallel these uh, both the lights should be parallel to the wall instead of perpendicular you can even do that but for that you have to do the little bit of the modifications in the program that is gdl program simply go back to the pull down menu file from there libraries and object make sure nothing is selected and then click on the open object otherwise if the object is already selected then that will get opened directly so don't do that don't select anything and then come over here i'll just now going to select this lamp post one once it is selected i'll say open and here again a very simple thing what you have to do is to get the top view which is not available right now you just have to go inside the 2d scripting and here you should type the same wording which last time you have delivered while doing the tree projection from the top so this time the lamp projection so if you just go and check out this is what you have achieved now what is the next part now the next part is if in case i want to rotate this object uh, which probably i can't do right now you want to check that okay i'll just save this and i'll just go back to my uh, this earlier tab you can see automatically the lamp uh, projection is getting displayed over here but uh, if you go inside the settings and if you check uh, in the post which you have added recently the user defined that is custom setting shows only these three options that is whether you can change the field surfaces and pen there is no possibility i can turn or rotate this around the z axis so what i have to do is i just have to back to my this um, lamp or uh, again uh, lamp post uh, object where I have started the editing for this in a, in a GDL. GDL is a geometry description language. So uh, let's try to do a simple task. I am just going to click on the parameters. Here you can see there are several parameters which by default getting generated with that particular save as option which we have already done as a library part. Now if you check out at the end, this is the last uh, field which is available. And if I try to say new, and now this new field was added but then it is added at the top so either you just uh, have to keep on pushing this down and take it at the end and uh, the way they have given the title over here as a pen title and uh, all these things are written so same way i can change this also i can say rotate or rotation and the type of this is not the length it is just a simple text okay and uh, sorry okay so a rotation whatever the name you like you can give not an uh, issue and then uh, one more field i'll add over here and this field will try to say that its uh, variable name will be like uh, rotate underscore z because the space is not valid over here. So rotate z is my variable name. It's supposed to be in an angle, okay? And it's a name which will appear in my dialog box at the time of uh, editing. That is nothing but rotate z okay so around z also you can type uh, so that's your choice hmm? and the current value uh, that's it now you just have to now there is one more thing which is pending it's nothing but you just have to add one more one sentence uh, which will help to operate this uh, parameter 
and that you have to add in the scripting. So go inside the script and already you have seen that how to write the 2D script uh, as a base level. So same way there's a lot of 3D uh, script is already uh, in the 3D script if you see a lot many options are already available. Of course, we are not going to talk about that. Here I'm just going to add one uh, new line over here and I'm just going to uh, write this particular sentence known as, uh, it's like a, a sort of a command that is rot z and uh, rotate z is supposed to be your that parameter name. So this was supposed to be my command and this is nothing but the name which you have allotted in the parameters, okay? So this is the variable name and the other one was supposed to be your uh, command. So just try to uh, check the script and uh, if you get some kind of a, this kind of a prompting, it's fine uh, because that may be just uh, due to the some unwanted in product which is written by the Archicad's end. So ultimately you're not supposed to worry about that. And now it's time to just simply save this. Once you save this, uh, you just try to uh, switch back to your uh, uh, view and you might even see that the object is uh, that is nothing but in your floor plan if you back if you shift back and you will see that there's some kind of a change is there maybe if it is not there you just simply go and check out that for the same inner post which you have recently added in the custom setting this is supposed to be in a new environment which is added known as a rotation and uh, rotate around z and you can here you can type the required value for example by default it was zero you can see how the preview is also changing. You can put any value as per your choice, 45 and so on. Okay, so I'll put uh, 90 as it is. And then I'll simply say okay for this. And uh, that's it, like uh, uh, moment you uh, change this value uh, as a 90. And if you switch back to your 3D view, you will see all the lampposts are now turned with the 90 degree. So, uh, hope you are getting the kind of a, some kind of a benefit of using the uh, railing tool uh, with some other effect I can say instead of just the ordinary railing. Let me show you one more interesting option with this help of same railing tool. Just check out if you have a piece of land and some contours are there. How we can place this uh, fence on the same contour line and uh, maybe then if you change anything in the uh, what you can say topography of this particular contours even that entire rail or railing or fencing can get automatically adjusted accordingly so uh, if you check out this is supposed to be the contour diagram which i have just considered now, while placing this uh, railing, you make sure that this time you just had um, just having additional option of the baluster along with the inner post. The trees are there already as a uh, inner post and the baluster which I have added over here, you can check out. Uh, basically, its uh, shape I have considered as a rectangle. Or a, uh, okay, or a square, we can say a shape, and but it is obviously it is designed as a rectangle for the profile height as a 50 and 100 as a profile width. Timber, which is the kind of a structure which I have chosen, uh, you can then apply some surface as per your choice when it comes for the presentation part. So that's your personal, uh, what you can say, decision. Now, one more important thing which you have to talk about is nothing but uh, the baluster pattern settings. Uh, here I have just kept all the options as a, a zero over here. Uh, you have a choice that you can start putting them, for example, uh, baluster pattern horizontal offset. Uh, if you say it has to move uh, roughly say around about 500, I can take it a little bit ahead of this. Uh, then there is supposed to be the uh, pattern left offset and right offset so all these things you can set as per your choice and uh, let's go ahead uh, now apart from this uh, I have chosen the baluster pattern distribution and position as a, a second option that is a fixed length and that um, uh, that value I uh, adjusted over here as a 200 remember 
this was supposed to be your earlier field was supposed to be 100 that is the width of the baluster and the gap I have kept it as a 200 that is center to center 200 so anyway I hope uh, you have understood let's place this so I'll say okay for this and uh, once I say okay and if I just hold my magic wand and if I just click on this you will see that the rail uh, this uh, railing or fencing is placed automatically on this entire what you can see uh, contour line and uh, interesting part the trees are getting distributed uh, randomly the reason was very simple if you check out uh, if you select this and if you check in this the logic between this inner post this time uh, distance between the two posts I have kept as a 3000 this indicates what if I am having any segment see these are the segments which you can check out these are the segments which are probably working for the uh, this your path of the rail uh, and uh, if the distance is less than 3 meter you will not see the tree but if it is a more than 3 meter or equal to you will see the tree location so that's the reason I am getting this variety and if I switch to the 3d view fine you will see this kind of a very uh, simple and uh, beautiful presentation I can say a quick presentation probably and uh, then what is the next part I can definitely play with this uh, say for example if you select this and uh, this mesh which I have selected and if you just check out the node of this particular contour line remember it's a contour which is supposed to be there its node if I select and if I go for the pet palette option for the elevate mesh point as a Z and if I just try to elevate this maybe 1500 you will see even your fence line is also getting automatically readjusted so if I elevate the next point maybe that is supposed to be 1 meter okay and so on so uh, a very interesting probably a quick presentation one can surely go for so please keep on trying and explore the tool you will get lot many uh, quick uh, what you can see presentation techniques by using this railing tool.